Hey guys! Today I'm back in Polybridge, and I'm at it again with the One Road Challenge. Last time I hinted at trying out a level with two cars, and this time, that's exactly what I want to do. So, let's get right into it. Now, I was looking for a good level to pick, and I decided on 3-8. Now, this level is actually kind of similar to the last two levels I did in my last episode. You can see the taxi has to get across, and it actually has to go up a little bit too, which is a little bit different. But after it goes across and hits its flag, this entire bridge rotates a little bit, and then a truck on the bottom needs to get across as well. Now, that's the big difference, that now there's going to be two cars for me to deal with. Now this is my original solution to the level, you can see I just have a bridge that rotates and it works for both sides. Now there's definitely better ways of doing this, you can do it with less roads, you can do it with less hydraulics. And what I want to do now is go with one road piece. And what I originally decided to go with was some sort of swing mechanism to rotate the entire thing 90 degrees and get it up from the bottom where you can see where it is by the taxi, all the way to the checkpoint flag. So I have that arm in place now and I need some way of reinforcing it. So I'm using some ropes and wood pieces just to hold it all together. And once I get that here, you can see it ends up holding the other once it hits the water. So I copy it over and now I need some way to be able to hold these swings in place. So I'm building up a bit of a support structure here, just some simple steel trussing. And once I have that now, you can see it breaks. So I have to put in a backbone as well, and once I have that backbone in place, you can see it scrapes the water, but it does work. Now this isn't the best, because if the car hits the water, it's basically just an instant fail. So I'm trying to keep it out, and I do some things to keep it a little bit higher, but also there's another problem too, where since it's all the way at the bottom, I'm going to need to be able to lift this up all the way to the platform, and that means I'm going to need a lot of force later on, and I just have a feeling it's going to cause things to break. So what I want to do instead is go for another straight line linkage called Hearts First Inverser. Now I normally use the PU Cellular Limpkin linkage, and that's because it's just good. It works pretty well and it's fairly compact for what it does, but this one looks cooler, kind of, in my opinion. You can see it's sort of this scissor-like shape, and one of the nodes just ends up being a perfectly linear output, so it should work well to perfectly move over the taxi from the bottom to the top, and then eventually move the truck from the bottom to the top. So I started making up some arms you can see here, and what I'm trying to do is just get the basic structure of this put in place, and it ends up being a lot harder than I expect, because for some reason the Wikipedia article wasn't listing the geometry as well as I'd like, so it was a little bit tricky for me to get everything the way I'd like it. Now I also had some in-game problems as well, you can see some of the nodes were intersecting each other, so I just sort of smash them together in weird ways to make it all fit well. But once I got that here, I also put in the last arm, and I got that and tried it out, and it looks bad, but it actually was working. You can see that that node is following this red line, which means that it's actually having a perfectly-ish linear output. So with that looking good, I put it in the level, and you can see now I just put a hydraulic on it to test it out, but I actually don't want it in the same orientation. I want it rotated 90 degrees so that it's moving from left to right instead of up and down. So once I rotated it, I just had to make sure to truss it up using some steel pieces and it seems to work fine, but I forgot to put a hydraulic on it, so I just had to make sure to do that. And I gave it a test here, and it is working. It's just not great. The problem with it is just that it doesn't move very far at all. And I tried putting it in a Scott Russell linkage to extend out its movement range, but it just didn't really make it move that much further, and it wasn't really working out the way I'd like. So I decided to scrap this linkage, and what I wanted to do was keep using the Scott Russell linkage, which I'll talk about in a second, and change up my straight line linkage from the Hearts First Inverser to a Pew Salyer Lepkin linkage. Now the Scott Russell linkage is quite interesting because what it does is it translates linear movement from one axis to another. Now if you also know how to move it the right way, you can also give it sort of an amplifying effect, which means that as you move one slide a little bit, it moves the output quite a bit more. So after I made this really long arm to hold all the roads in place, I'm putting the linkage in now, and you can see here it's just basically this Y shape, and I'm going to have a hydraulic on it, pulling in that center node, and pushing it out as well. Now I'm putting in the Pew Cellular Lipkin linkage right here, and this one's actually going to be used in place of the slider that the mechanism normally uses, because in Polybridge there is no slider mechanism, so to get a perfectly linear movement, you're going to need to use some sort of perfectly linear linkage, which is exactly what this does. Now, I'm sort of cheesing the Scott Russell linkage right now. It's not supposed to be used exactly like this. You can see it actually ends up breaking just from the strain of that arm. But basically what happens is as this linkage moves in, it pulls up a little bit on the arm, and if you have the right arm length, it pulls it up on it perfectly to keep it perfectly linear. I had a really long arm though, and I was hoping it'd pull it up just enough to keep it out of the water a decent distance so that it wouldn't really be a problem. But it ended up not really pulling it up that much at all, and it was sort of just not great. You can see I shrunk down the arm quite a bit, so it's much shorter, and I also put in a second one as well. Now the second one's actually really important, because what it does is keeps the road perfectly flat, while it's moving in that linear way. So once I had that in place, I was trying to extend out its range of movement, because right now it's only moving about 4 meters in that linear way before it just got stuck. So the first thing I did was extended out my straight line linkage, and this helped quite a bit, but it still wasn't great, it was only like 6 meters of movement. And I also extended out the Scott Russell linkage, and this helped me quite a bit as well. And I got a little bit greedy now, and expanded it out too much, and you'll see what happens here when it tries to pull in. The hydraulic pulls in, and the straight line linkage actually ends up fracturing, and there's just too much load on it. So I had to shrink it down a little bit, and this still isn't great. I actually end up fracturing it here as well. 
And what I decided to do is just make that linkage as big as I possibly can, and that's really just what I did here. So once I have that in place, I just made sure to copy it over to the, the other side, and it seems to work, and it moves over a pretty good distance, and it's like just barely enough to get to the other side. Now, I wasn't in love with this, and what I wanted to do instead was just sort of make the whole thing just a lot bigger, because there's no real reason for me to make the linkage as small as possible. I'm not trying to save money, I'm not trying to save size, so I might as well just make it nice and big and easy for me to work with. So here I'm putting in one of the arms, and you can see I also got a little bit classy with the design. Now inside of that in place, I just made sure to copy everything over to the other three arms, and I finished it up here, and then I made a nice truss structure to hold it all together. So once I got my larger linkage pieces in place, the next thing to do was brace it all together. So for that, I'm just using some simple steel trussing here, and you'll see I'm actually connecting the bottom beam to the top beam using some triangles and some cables. Now there's a few ways to do this, I just think this way looks particularly nice, that's why I did it. And what I want to do is just test how it pulls in, so I'm using a hydraulic here, and you see now as it pulls in, the bottom bottom part moves linearly, and it should move as far as I need it to. So with that all looking good, what I do is just kind of grab the whole thing off and rotate it 8 degrees. Now the reason I'm doing this is I don't want it to move perfectly parallel with the river, I actually want it to pull up just a little bit so that the taxi on the bottom can get to its top checkpoint flag, and then once the whole thing rotates, the truck on the bottom can get to its checkpoint flag. So once I had it rotated and I made sure to brace it together, you can see I'm also putting in a road at the bottom, and I didn't attach it directly to the ends of the mechanism, and so I give myself a little bit of play, so I can move it up and down, and I don't mess up the rest of the mechanism. So with all that looking good, the next thing to do was add some way to be able to pull this over. Now I can't just use hydraulics like I had before, and the reason for that is that the hydraulics actually pull before and after the car moves. So I need something that pulls it over during the car's movement, and for that I'm going to need some sort of gravity powered device. Now you see here I have some rotating triangle piece with roads on the end of it, and I know this is one road challenge, I'll be getting rid of these roads and I'll replace them with steel later, but for now roads are just really easy and heavy, so it just makes it very easy to make rotators and stuff with them. So with that in place, you can see here I'm giving it a test, but I'm having a lot of trouble grabbing the island, and it's because I have no static joint to grab onto. I'm just sort of trying to pin it against the island as tight as I can, and it's not really that good. So here I sort of got it to taxi loads on, but it ends up shattering, and it's just because I have such weird loads on it. So to hopefully fix that, I used a few more bracing pieces. I actually added a few more roads to hopefully move it over faster. And here when I tried doing it, it actually did move it over, but you can see it's just very rough. It ends up rotating in an odd way. And this isn't even what I want necessarily. What I want to do is have it slowly move over early on so that the car can load onto it, and then quickly pull over so that the car doesn't fall off of it while it's on that one road. And to do that, you can see I'm rotating over that entire triangle. And what that does is early on, the roads produce a very small torque on that triangle, which accelerates the whole thing very slowly. But once it starts rotating and gets a larger torque on it, it could pull it over much faster and then it'll get the car over faster. So with that looking good, I decided to brace it a little bit more and I braced it all the way to one of the static joints earlier on because it was having a lot of trouble and once I did this you can see it's very stable. So it pulls over and it looks good in terms of the movement and everything. So I played the roads a lot trying to get them exactly where I want them. You can see here the car ended up getting a load on, but a lot of the times it just didn't move at all fast enough. And when I tried moving around the roads, what also happened too is the car just wouldn't quite load on but eventually here after playing with it enough, I finally get the car to load on, and you can see it just barely gets on. The back wheel hangs there for a really long amount of time, front wheel barely doesn't get stuck, and it ends up hitting the flag. Now the whole thing destroys itself, and you can see the second truck just falls into the water, but it does kind of work. So the next thing I wanted to do was figure out some way to slow this down so that it didn't destroy itself every time, and for that what I'm doing is adding in some springs. And I was hoping the springs would be able to pull on the whole mechanism and stop it from accelerating so quickly at the end, but this had a lot of problems. And the springs are actually really weak, and you see here the car didn't load on at all. That's fine though, the springs add a little bit of resistance and the car ended up changing its movement a little bit, but the springs just snap because they're so thin. And even using a diamond spring design, it still just snaps. So I tried doing a whole bunch of stuff, moving the springs further over to the rotator part, but even here, even though the car did load on, which is technically better, it still ends up just destroying itself because the springs are nowhere strong enough to pull it in. So what I wanted to go for instead was stopping the acceleration instead of just trying to counter it somehow. And for that, I want to have the triangle rotate so that the roads fall on the land instead of just falling off the edge of the island. And what that does is produces much less weight. So as it rotates more and more, less and less weight is on it, and it's pulling less and less hard. And it should accelerate less, and actually we should get deceleration at some point, and the car ideally would stop right before the flag and be able to fall off. Now, I didn't move it over far enough, and unfortunately it actually fell off the side of the island. So I had to pull it in even further, and once I tried this here, you can see the car falls off. That's fine though. But it slows down much more, and you can see the roads are actually hitting the ground, and breaking off, falling off, and just producing less force in general. So that's good, and I wanted to add back in the springs to just finish off that deceleration. They should be fine now, since there's much less force on them, so I was thinking this all should be good. And here you actually see the springs held up fine, it was actually the support material that broke. So I just had to make sure to brace that to the back of the island. You can see the car still falls off, and it slows down quite a bit, 
but it ends up breaking. So after just putting in a bunch more bracing materials, I finally get the car to stay on, and you can see here it ends up hitting its flag, and the springs end up stopping it. So this was actually really good, and the next thing I wanted to do was start working on the mechanism to rotate this over to get it in place for the truck to get on. So you see here I'm putting in a lot of bracing pieces, and what I'm going for is sort of just a stable point I can start basing my rotation point off of. Basically what I want to do is rotate the entire Scott Russell linkage I have over just a little bit, so instead of starting in the bottom left and ending on the top right, it starts on the bottom right and ends on the top left. So I'm putting in a rotational point here, and this is the one I'm actually going to be rotating around. It is to be very specific, because it basically has to be left and right, right in between the two land pieces and up and down has to be right in between the top platform and the land. Once I got that here you can see that's the rotational point and it is rotating around it. I'm putting a hydraulic here as the car goes across, hits its flag, it pulls down and you can see it sort of rotates into place. Now I have a small problem where the road is sort of in the middle of the river now and I need some way to be able to keep it on the bank. And for that what I want to do is add two cables. Now these cables as it pulls over should become relatively taut and it should keep it on the other side. Now the problem here is it actually became taut too early and it ended up forcing over the mechanism too quickly and breaking stuff. So I did this extended it out. I also told the springs to break off once they got to the other side. You can see here they snap off. And also on the other side where I'm pointing my arrow, the roads fall off too. And once I do that, it works. Like the cables are taut, but the road's still not on the side. And the problem is I actually needed the cable to expand after the fact. So I added in two hydraulics to push it over even more. And once I had this, I also had to make sure to pull it down a little bit more. You see now I'm using a diamond hydraulic. Functionally, it does the same thing though to rotate it. And I also put in one more hydraulic to pull up on the road to rotate it up just a little bit so that once the truck gets on it, it gets stuck. Now there you can see it actually didn't get stuck, so I had to rotate it up even more. And here you can see once it gets over the edge, it's totally stuck in place, and all I have left to do is pull over the entire thing to the other side. So for that, what I'm doing is putting in three steel pieces and using some cables as well. And what these cables and steel pieces are going to do is create a nice frame for me to start basing my rotator off of. So I had to build that rotator, and for that, you can see it's exactly the same I had before, just the triangle piece. And I decided to put it up really high in the air. I'm not sure why I did this, because it had no practical benefit. It definitely looked cool, but you can see it actually kind of caused some problems for me and made it very difficult, and I reverted back. But for now, it's up in the air, and you can see how it works. And now what I want to do is just add in two pieces of cable, and what these are going to do are come taut once it goes over to the other side, and it'll be able to rotate over, and it'll be able to pull it back over to this side. Now I'm also extending out one of the arms and making it kind of look like a crane almost, and I'm also adding in, I didn't quite show it for some reason, what I have is a steel piece that detaches once it gets over to the other side, so this thing doesn't start even rotating until the taxi hits its checkpoint. So you can see here now it's rotating, and it ends up destroying itself, and it's actually rotate too fast, and there's no springs or anything to dampen the load, so as soon as it pulls on it, it just breaks. So to fix that problem, like I said, I need to add in some springs. And to do that, I'm just, I have a very simple mechanism here with a spring and a steel piece on it. And I just have to make sure to brace up some of the pieces and make them diamonds instead of just single pieces of steel. Once I have this, you can see here it pulls on it and it actually does start to pull it over. You can see the red piece ends up coming all the way over to the other side. But after I removed only one piece of wood that was holding it in place, it actually doesn't even move it over at all. You can see the truck gets on it, but it doesn't do anything. And this is sort of the problem I was talking about before with this being too high up in the air. It just makes it very difficult to fine tune, I found. So I moved it further down and once I did this, I attached it up the same way basically but I added in a timing mechanism as well and this was sort of the big breakthrough I had so the timing mechanism is a spring that collapses in on itself you can see here it's doing that and the idea is I can fine-tune these points and when I do that it's just the amount of time it takes for it to collapse in on itself and fully fall down. Now, this sort of works up to about five-ish seconds, and it's basically what I need. So here you can see I end up getting it so that the truck can roll on it. And once I have that here, it starts moving, and it pulls over pretty far, but the mechanism just breaks. Now, this was very good, the fact that it got on it. So I reinforced it a bit with a couple steel cables, and I can see once it rotates down, the truck gets on it, and it pulls over, and it looks really good. Probably too good, because it goes over the flag. Now, I didn't really know how to react to this because it was such a weird problem, so I just told the ramp part of this to pull up a little bit less, so the truck still gets stuck on it, but it's leaning down just a little bit more, and that little bit was just enough to get it to hit the flag and beat the level. So here, I actually did replace the roads that were on the gravity mechanisms with steel pieces. I'll show that in the final cut, but for now, I just want to show some of the highlights and show you what's going on. So guys, thanks for watching. I'm definitely surprised at how long it took me to get this all working. It seems like it should just be a little bit harder than getting one across, since all I need to do in that case is have another mechanism to pull it back over, but getting things to fall into place the right way, getting things to dampen the right way was very difficult, but I'm glad I got it working. So if you have any more suggestions for levels that I can try to beat with one road, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe, and otherwise, until next time.